Hi and welcome to this uh, teaching I'm going to have for you uh, today. And today I really want to come with an encouragement for you. And it's a scripture that has meant a lot to me lately. And it's a scripture from the Bible, from the Psalms actually, Psalms 46, where it says that, Be still and know that I am God. So that's, that, that, that is my encouragement for you today. And I'm going to give some encouragement for you today. Before I start with this encouragement and this teaching today, uh, but uh, before I start, just may, let me just uh, share with you that I have some podcasts and that you can subscribe to. I also have a YouTube, uh, YouTube channel uh, and you can find it on my website, Good News for Broken Hearts. You can find, find out more on my website, goodnewsforbrokenhearts.com. Uh, and but I have a bot podcast on uh, Spotify or also on iTunes. Uh, so please uh, you can find you can also search my name there and you can find my podcast. Uh, so in English I'm not uh, doing it every week, uh, but in Norwegian I I have kind of a weekly teaching in Norwegian. Uh, but when I'm uh, teaching in English, I don't do it in Norwegian anymore because it's too much to do. So uh, if you're Norwegian, uh, today my teaching, my weekly teaching will be in English, not in Norwegian. But I, I still have a, a Norwegian site and I have a lot of teaching there. And you can go to my site, bibelunemisning.com, and you can find a lot of teaching I have there. And, and if you are Norwegian, please also feel free to uh, go to my website, bibelunemisning.com, and you can also find a seminar that I have that is about uh, to be uh, restored, full restoration. It's called in, in Norwegian, it's called Fulli uh, uh full restoration. Uh, in English, I, I kind of have some highlights and I also use some of the same material when I'm teaching, even today. Uh, so, uh, so I, but I don't have the, the kind of the same setup that I have in Norwegian. Uh, I have more listeners in Norwegian than I have in English uh, right now. I hope that we can change in the future. Uh, so please feel free to share this teaching that I have both on YouTube and, and uh, on Facebook and, and other places. Uh, so when I see that I have more, more people that, that listening to these teachings, I will maybe do also more things in English. So feel free to do that. So but uh, let's start with, with what I have to share, what I have on my heart for you today. And I really believe that's very important, a very important message that, that I have for you today and that can really encourage you. And as I said, my heading for this teaching today is Be still and know that I am God. Be still, in, in actually in my Norwegianist translation, it's more, more say that be at ease or uh, fall, uh, fall into, yeah, fall into, bam, back into ease in a way. Don't stress up, <laughs> don't be stressed out, but know that I am God. Uh, you know, in this world that we are living in, it's easy to be, be stressed out. Stressed out of all the things that, that uh, comes towards us. It can be all from demands that we meet at, at work that, we, that can stress us out. Uh, it can be uh, family. Uh, it can be even sickness. Uh, maybe we, we got a bad report from the doctor. Uh, or, we, um, or it can be f uh, finances. We, we, we don't have the finance that, that, that we need and we can get stressed out. And we don't find the peace. We're thinking about this day and night even. Maybe you don't sleep at night because you feel that, uh, uh, yeah, you feel frustrated and or you feel uh, fr uh, stressed out in a way. Um, and sometimes, you know, our, our reaction to circumstances and, and things like that is not so much different than the non-Christian sometimes. And you know, I'm, I'm not saying this in condemnation or anything, but, but sometimes I have asked me that question. Why is that? <laughs> Why is that we, we as Christians, we, we say that we have the answer. We say that we, 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 you know, we have a lot of promises in the Bible. Even this, this, uh, this, uh, yeah, this promise, I have, I have um, the, the heading of this teaching today, that I have as a heading for this teaching. Be still and know that I am God. <laughs> Even that, that the scripture, sometimes we, we take it and we, and we know it. We maybe know it by heart, heart. We have heard it many times. 
And you say yes, yes, that's uh, that's true. Yeah, we, uh, we can, we can. Uh, God is uh, our help. In, in you know, in Psalm 46, it says that God is our refuge and our strength, and and a very presence in trouble, and and therefore we will not fear, even though the earth be removed, and even though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, uh, though the waters roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake uh, with its swelling and so on, I will not fear. <laughs> we have scriptures like this. A lot of them in Psalms and, and, and other places too, where it says that do not fear, do not be afraid, don't be worried, don't be anxious for anything. <laughs> we have those scriptures, but still we fall into it. We still are anxious. We still are stressed out. We are not at ease. We are not at peace. <laughs> and sometimes we wonder, we have these questions. How can I get into this rest? It seems that I like the same the same reaction I have is the same as the non-Christian. And it shouldn't be like that, you know. That's the truth. It shouldn't be like that. Because we have some better promises than this world. We have someone who really cares for us. So why do we stress out? Why do, are we sometimes so afraid? Why are we not still and just know that He is God at ease in a way? at peace with ourself, with ourself, and peace with God in a way. Why are we so stressed out sometimes when it comes to life, when it comes to, uh, uh, to the things that happens to us? And as I said, we have scriptures, and I, I know there's another scripture that I really like, and I want to share it with you too, but because it's a key. But I, I, I confess this scripture many times, and sometimes I'm still not at ease. I'm still not at peace. <laughs> I still stressed out. But uh, Isaiah 26, 3, it says that you will keep him, him in perfect peace whose mind in state is stayed on you because he trusts in you. So it's two things here that, that, that is very important. And it's about our mind, that our mind needs to be stayed on him. It needs to be stayed on the truth. The second one is because he trusts in you you because they trust in him and it is a key here it is really a key here this verse has a key because he trusts in him it is about trust but how do we trust god actually when we and i'm not again i'm not saying this to to to, to bring condemnation I'm, I'm i'm giving you an answer today i want to give you an answer today but sometimes we we we, we uh, we stressed out <laughs> and and we don't and it's actually about trust that you're not trusting in God but the question is why do we don't, don't not trust in God when circumstances may meet us and and if we freak out why is it that we don't trust in God you know uh, for in my life too I, I'm not I'm not perfect in this <laughs> I'm not having this, this teaching today because I have got it totally. I totally, 100% trust in God, in everything, in every circumstances. And my reaction, reaction when, uh, when something, uh, something unexpected happens or, or problems comes, is always like ease. I'm so easy. Oh, that's no problem. I'm, I'm actually not like that so, uh, most of the times, actually. But sometimes I, I go back and I'm, I'm starting to think, why am I, am I thinking like this? I can actually trust in God. Why do, don't I trust in God? Just recently I, I had a situation, or we are in a situation, where it's actually, uh, it, it's in a way, it's about my do own do daughter and citizens of my own daughter. My wife is not from, from Norway, she's from another country, and, and it's, uh, it's, it's a bit difficult actually. Uh, to get uh, a citizenship for my da daughter and and that met me for for a week ago and and it it stressed me out right away it really stressed me out but then god gave me actually this scripture he said that remember this be still and know that i am god and this actually means that we should not it doesn't mean that you shouldn't do anything sometimes we need to do something but it, first of all just put your trust in God. Be at ease. Put, uh, go to God first. <laughs> it's easy to when you get an email or, or get a mail or, or get a report from, from someone. It's easy to stress out right away. 
But then, then God is just reminding me, go back, come back, and be still, be at ease. And when you, and, and from a, a place of peace, you can, you can start to see more clearly. It's when you are at peace, at ease, <laughs> it's then you can see more clearly what to do and not to. If you actually act, when we are stressed out, we sometimes take the wrong decisions. I have been there many times, and, and probably you have too. That we, when we stress out and are not at ease, we maybe do the, take the wrong decisions when we do that. But God is telling us, be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. And I want to encourage you today to this word to be still and know that I am God. But back to this thing that we, it is a mighty girl, God that we serve. We know that. We say that. As a Christian we confess that. And that, that we should not give in to stress and, and things like that. But the reality that we, we sometimes we don't do that. We let things, even circumstances, won't sometimes control us and, and actually dictate our future sometimes. Or di dictate our, our decisions sometimes. And as I said, many, many times I asked this question, why, why do we do that? Why are we are not so different from this world? Why am I not at ease? <laughs> why, why am I not at peace? Why do I react, react, react like this world sometimes? You know, when, when this bad report came to, to us uh, for, for, uh, about the, or, or the, 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 the situa situation that we are in, uh, when, when it came uh, to us, to come to, to me, came to me, um, I was a bit stressed out. But then actually my wife, I have a, a, a wonderful, fantastic wife, uh, and, and she, she actually reminded me about this. <laughs> you know, this is how the world will react. Why are we reacting on the same way? We shouldn't do that. <laughs> because we are the child of God. We know a mighty God who is bigger than any problems in this world. He is bigger than your sickness. He is bigger than the problems that you face right now. Why should we, or when we get a bad report from the doctor, why, why should we freak out like this world do? You know, why should we do that? Because we, that's not us. <laughs> You know, we have a God, we serve a mighty God. But still sometimes we don't, we freak out and we don't trust in Him. If we trust in Him, we will always be at peace. But why do we don't do that sometimes? That's the question. And I, uh, I'm going to, uh, you know, I'm building up to something here and I, I'm going to give you the answer. And Actually, some of the answer is this. Sometimes we don't believe, well, we believe in God. As a Christian, we believe that He exists. And if, if, the, if we didn't believe He existed, we, we wouldn't be Christians, right? So we do believe that He is ex existing. We believe that He is, He is, that we, we believe that there is a God. We believe that Jesus died for our sins. We believe all these things. So, so that's, that, that's okay. <laughs> we do that. That's the, the, and, and that's the first point. But still we react the same way. Why do we do that as a non-Christian? Why do, do, we, do we do that? Can I tell you an answer? And the Bible does, does give us an answer too. Even in First John is talking about that. That is talking about if our hearts condemn us, we don't have confidence in front of God. If our heart condemns us, we don't have confidence in front of God, and that is where, uh, where the, uh, yeah, where the the main thing is actually. We are not sure. Many times we are not sure about how God's looked look at us. Yes, we believe He exists, but sometimes we believe that He might not be satisfied with us. Maybe we haven't prayed enough. Maybe we haven't, haven't given the 10% of our income, or, or maybe we have done a sin lately, or we have a, a habit of sin, a sin habit, and we haven't pleased God enough lately. And then we kind of think that God is, is can, can I trust God? Can I really, 
uh, trust God when I've done these things. You know, if, if, you, uh, if you are not sure if God is a good God, if, if, or if you don't, if you're not sure that you are pleasing to God, that you are pleased, God is pleased with you, you will not run to Him, you will not trust Him. If you believe that God is angry with you, you will not trust Him. You will not trust a person who, who tries to find fault with you all the time or, or are always looking at, at your bad, bad stuff and they're trying to find what's wrong with you and try to condemn you. If there is a person who wants all the time to try to find what's wrong with you and condemn you, you will not set your trust in that person. Trust me, you will not do that. And that's the view many Christians have of God. Maybe not conscious, consciously, always, as me, I, I'm not, not consciously thinking about those things, but it's just programmed our mind. And I know the truth. <laughs> I know the truth about what the Bible says, you know, that God is love, that He loves us, and all of these things. I know that. But still I have a programming that my maybe, maybe it's not trustworthy, maybe I can't really trust God. Has God really said, you know, that the, the, the voice of the enemy, all the way from the garden, it still comes to us today and tell us, or try to tell us, can we trust God? Can you really trust Him? Has God really said that you can trust Him? And you're not sure if you can trust God, because you have not behaved well lately. And that's one, one reason why we sometimes act the same way as this world. <laughs> because we haven't seen our true identity and we haven't seen the true identity of God who God truly is, that God is always for you, He he's always wants to help you, He's actually not after your sin. Believe me or not, He is not after to point out your sin. Because God did something with sin through Jesus Christ on the cross 2,000 years ago. He did something with sin already. The Bible tells us that you are dead to sin. Sin has no dominion, He has no power over you anymore and that's the truth but god and god is pleased be pleased with you and not even because jesus died for your sins many believe that yeah god is pleased with me for, because god died for my sins no it's not actually true that's that's the belief many have and i believe that many times for, for many many years but he, god loves you not because jesus died for you why did Jesus die for you in the first place? <laughs> because He loved you. He loved you. He loved you before Jesus died for you. <laughs> he loved you because you are His son, His daughter. You are his, his lost son and daughter. That's why Jesus came, so that the lost can be found. You are valuable. You are loved. And God is not after to find the fault that you are doing. But He's after you to give his love to you and actually when you see this love you will be at ease you will be at peace and you will be still and you will know that he is god isn't that good news you can be still and know that he is god you don't have to freak out you don't have to be afraid and so on and one last thing that i want to also mention today and I do mention it a lot on my website. It comes back to who I'm talking about who God is, and I'm also talking about who you are. And I'm, I'm always coming back to this. And if you have heard me before, it doesn't matter, you need to hear it again. And this is the, actually one point that is so important. And you know maybe the first point I had here today, that God He's for you. He lays love. He's for you. He's, he, he loved you. You are his son, his daughter, and he loves you. That's why you don't have to freak out <laughs> when uh, our circumstances and difficult things happen. Because you can trust him because he is your God. But another thing that, that, that is connected to, it's often connected to the thing that we feel that God is not pleased with us. It's about our identity. Because sometimes we don't feel God is pleased with us because we feel that part of our identity is evil. Or that we still have a bad nature on the inside of us. 
We believe that part of our identity is still bad. Or we believe that we are, have a nature that is both good and both bad. And if you believe that, you will not have also, you will not have confidence in front of God. Especially if, if the, that bad side of you has, has been there for a while or, or you have been, yeah, you have been bad in some ways. You don't have confidence in front of God. And that's one thing too. Or it's maybe the main thing that really will steal your confidence in front of God. It will steal the power of prayer. Because you believe, you don't believe that God will hear, hear your prayer. You know, that's why many people are running around and, and try to find preachers or, or people to pray for them. Because they believe that they are not perfect. They believe maybe a, a preacher, he, he got it all together. <laughs> he, he living a holy life and that nobody else is uh, really able to do. And uh, especially if it's a, a preacher that has the healing gift or something like that. And if we put in trust in other people and, and think that they have the, have the anointing, they have the things, and they have got it all together. They have victory in all areas of their lives and so on. And God is maybe looking at them and, 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 and the anoint, uh, anointing is over them. But, but me, I know myself, I know how bad I am, I, I know my bad sides and, and so on. And many people are afraid of themselves. That's why we have, it's a lot of, even in Christian circles, it's a lot of uh, this thing that we have, we have kind of this test sometimes. You have these personality tests. And you know, you don't find a personality test in the Bible. <laughs> Let me just say that you don't find a, a personality test in the Bible. You find out who you are in the Bible, not a personality test. You do you know where this personality test comes from? It doesn't come from the Bible. It comes from psychology, in a way, in this world. It's come from this world. Because this world is looking for, uh, for identity. They don't know who they are. And they try to find out who they are. So they try to find the bad side and good side, and they take all these tests and, and so on. But those tests are not in the Bible. <laughs> They're not... And I believe it's, it's not really, some of them doesn't really help you even. I'm not totally, totally against them because it gives you a snapshot of where you are at right now. And it can help you to see your programming, your bad programming. But when people take these tests, and they sometimes look at this test and they believe that this is who I am. You know, I have taken those tests many times. And you know, every time I take this test, and it, it has been maybe even 10 or 20 years between them, it was kind of popular even in the 80s. Um, it started to be popular in the 80s, and, or 90s, 90s, I mean, uh, I'm not that old, but <laughs> in the 90s, it started to, to, to get popular. Uh, so I, I was still in my 20s when in, in, in the 90s. Uh, but I remember in, in, in a, when I went to school, uh, a Bible school in the, in the beginning of the 90s, uh, I got these this, uh, personality tests. And in some ways it's kind of helped me too, in, in a way. But I took some tests later on, like 10 years and 15 years and 20 years even later, and I found out that I have changed. It was not the same. <laughs> it was not the same identity. I have changed in many ways. And I started to, to question these things. I started to question these kind of personality tests. Because it didn't really find out who I am. Especially when it's looking at, at, at the bad side. You, you know, there's, there's, there are some positive things. And there are some things you can find out about yourself. And, and that's, that's, that's maybe good. But, uh, but, but, but there, there are things that, that is not you. It's a programming. Many people may believe, oh, I'm so introvert. <laughs> But see, some people, they are introvert because they are afraid. Because of, you know, I, I, when I took the te test, I, I really was an introvert before. But then I took it the test many years later, and then I was, was a lot more e extrovert. <laughs> I'm still not very extrovert, but, but I was a lot more extrovert. And why, is, why was that? Because I started to, 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 start, start to, actually to get to know myself in a different way. Uh, it was a programming thing that made me be ex introvert, not extrovert. When, I, when this programming started to, uh, to be uh, reprogrammed, <laughs> I changed. 
I changed more into who I am, actually. You know, to find out who you truly are, you need to reprogram yourself. Because there's lies that you have been believing about yourself. And you need to go back to the Creator. And the Creator, when He created your identity, I'm not talking about nature, but I'm talking about identity. When you created, when God created your identity, He created your you perfect. Everything with you is perfect. He didn't create evil. He created, don't, didn't create evil in you. Before you become to, mm, a Christian or become to God, you have a evil, you have a sinful nature. But that sinful nature also got crucified when you became a Christian. So you are a new, new nature. You have got a new nature now. And now it's all about finding out who you truly are, your true identity. And your true identity, you don't find it through these tests that you have. You find it through the Creator who created you. In Galatians, this is, 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 uh, Galatians 5, you can find out a little bit who you are. Not, not nor your personality fully, but, but uh, at least about the nature that you know how, have, on the inside of you. That you are in love, you are patience, you are the, the fruit of the Spirit, it's what you are right now. That's the nature, new, new, new nature that you have. The old nature is, is the old bad things that is mentioned in, in Galatians 5. But your identity has always been good. It has all never been bad. And that's a very important thing to know. Your identity has always been good. And it's all, all about finding out who you are. And this personality test will not tell you your true identity. When, when it comes to bad things about yourself, it's a, like the good thing about yourself, or the bad things about yourself. It won't tell you the true identity. Because your identity is not bad. And you know when you know that. When you get, you get peace with yourself. You can start to accept yourself and you can start to love yourself and you will be at peace with yourself. And when you are at peace with yourself and know that, that, uh, that, uh, yeah, know that you are accepted, that you are loved, you know that God can die, you know God too, that He loves you. When you are at ease with yourself, you can start to love yourself in the right way. It doesn't mean that you, you, you will not stop, uh, you, know, you will not follow the bad pro programming anymore. As long as we are down here, we need to reprogram our mind. It's actually called in the Bible, it's called renewing of the mind. In Romans 12, 2, it's talking about renewing of the mind. And that is what it's all about. And that's why we sometimes uh, act the way with, that we do when problems come. It's, it's only because, it's not because we have a bad identity or a bad nature anymore. But it's actually about that we haven't renewed our mind. It's still the way, the fleshly way of thinking, <laughs> the fleshly way that we reacted before, it's still there. And it just needs to be reprogrammed. And it's, it's the key here that I told you also in Isaiah, that whose mind is stayed on him. We need to uh, renew our minds, that we need to know that God is good. He is for, uh, for us. He is always for us. He is always with us. He will never leave us nor forsake us. He is, uh, he is never against us. God is never against you. I don't say that He is not against the sin that we do sometimes. He is for sure against sin. I'm not talking about that. But He is not against you. He is for you. And when, when they know that you, He is for you, you can trust Him in all circumstances. In all bad circumstances, in sickness, in problems that we have, in stress that we have, even on, the, on uh, maybe even in the workplace, we can be at ease. We can be at peace. We can know that He is God. We can trust Him, and we can be at ease and, and peace. And also, when we truly know who we are, we can uh, we can be still. We don't have to stress out. We don't have to freak out. Because we, we, if you know that God loves me, because I am His son, His daughter, and He created me the way I am perfectly. Yes, there is part of me, and maybe even that has become a part of my identity in a way, but that is not me. Sin cannot program you. The flesh cannot program you. The old nature cannot program you in a bad way. And that needs to re be renewed, and you need to get knowledge of who you truly are. But you can be 
and that's a process but you can still have the confidence in front of God in every situation in every circumstances you can be still and know that he is God just be still and know that he is God be still be still God wants to say this to you today be still and know that I am God I am in control of your your life you can trust me you are my dear child you are my dear daughter my son or my daughter that I am well pleased in I am pleased in you today and that's why you can trust me God wants to, to tell that to you today and I hope that this has been an encouragement for you today so uh, please feel free to follow me uh, both on on, uh, yeah, on the podcast uh, on uh, both on iTunes and also on, on Spotify um, and, 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 and go to my website goodnewsforbrokenhearts.com and you find some information there and go to my YouTube channel too you can find some information on goodnewsforbrokenhearts.com and also if you want to support uh, us uh, and also receive newsletters from us please feel free to visit my website goodnewsforbrokenhearts.com or my Facebook page too called Good News for Broken Hearts Bible Teaching uh, and please go to this this uh, this uh, yeah, this Facebook page and also this website and find some information there uh, and please also feel free to support us uh, as uh, we uh, we are a family working in Northern Thailand and we actually are uh, dependent on people who wants to support us so if you want to do that, please feel free to do that. If you find, find the information uh, on, web, on my website, you can use uh, PayPal. Uh, and also on Facebook, you find some information there. So please feel free to, to do that. And if you are Norwegian, uh, I have a Norwegian bank account and also a VIPs number uh, in Norwegian. So please feel free to do that. Uh, so uh, and, and if you are Norwegian, please go to bibliunivisning.com and you can find some information there too. So and that was what was I had what what was I had for you today so god bless you